Hey guys, Andrew and welcome back to the channel. So guys, this is a continuation, part, so part two, if you will, of disability and relationships. So guys, I wanted to talk about a client support worker relationship. Now, first and foremost is you need to realize it's a professional relationship. They can be friendly, they can be light and fluffy, but it is a professional relationship. So you essentially are the employer for them and they are your employee. In a housing facility and a larger organisation, there will be things that on an organisational wide level they need to get done. If you're in a day centre and a one to three as well, same thing. There will be structured activities based around your goals as well. So for me, I have a lot of goals around my business but also in the background around my health and fatigue. Uh, the NDIS does put in clear distinctions between health and disability. So if you have a disability there is a thing called health related supports but the health system whether public or private so for my American viewers, Australia does have a scheme called Medicare, which is a universal health system. So if you go to a public hospital, you are charged for it. There is also the option to go private and pay out of pocket. We also do have public health, um, the option to have private health insurance, which covers the gap between what Medicare will pay in the private system and what you have to pay out of pocket. Those co-pays are rising. I don't know enough about it, but if you have a look over at Friendly Georgie's channel, he's covered it quite well. And guys, so that's the other thing. So guys, I've covered what is good and bad support, what is a good and a bad support worker. But then there's another one that no one wants to talk about, and that's the elephant in the room. It is, what's a bad client? So a bad client won't be willing to work with the support worker. They will have to be constantly pushed. They will gossip. They will try and throw the support worker under the bus. They will actively lie and manipulate the support worker, whether that be paying for things, whether that's getting them to do things that are out of their scope, getting them to do things that they aren't trained to do because they don't like the support worker, they might have a history with them, or it also might be behaviours of concern. So guys, I am going to talk to a psychologist and a psychiatric nurse about behaviours of concern. But we do see that the NDIS is starting to cover mental health issues, so things like schizophrenia, as well um, they can be quite disabling as well so guys that's the thing a bad client can ruin a support worker relationship it can sour the relationship so the best one is clear communication so that might be ringing the agency and letting them know that what you're planning for that day so they can prepare so for me, I go swimming on a Friday, so I've let them know, bring tops and towel, bring makeup, bring a clean uniform. I've asked if one of my similar girls will come on the channel. Um, so having that clear, honest communication and realising that they have bad days, that they are human as well, and that if they're particularly with an agency, having an allocated shift. If they're a private, Talking to your support coordinator, talking to family, talking to friends, talking to groups that they might belong to, of having a shift as well and not dragging out that shift as well and having a really good structured routine as well. So, so that support worker knows what they're doing, especially if they're independent. I do know that you can transition from someone who's a friend to a formal support worker. Now, I'll talk to Deb about that and documentation with that is really important as well. So how are they paid? What are their duties? 
whose car do they use, all of those day-to-day -day things. Do they bring their own lunch or are they compensated lunch? What are their duties? Do you need them to have extra training around medication, around lifting? Do they need to have extra skills? Because I know Jessica Kelgrad Frozard, her wife is her film assistant, but she also then has a support worker doing the housework, laundry, clothing as well, as her personal assistant as well. And there might also be times where you only need a support or a plan for a limited amount of time then these are a whole other topic and I'll do disability jargon so these are dynamic disabilities so for me I have good days and bad days with the pain good days I can do a lot more bad days it's Netflix it's recording it's editing it's ringing my housing agency saying hey can someone from next door's unit pop in as well and this is the other thing is especially in a housing agency if you're high functioning and for my american viewers high functioning isn't considered a offensive term in australia i'm australian based so i'm going to use that term so we know that disability is on a spectrum uh, we have higher and lower functioning and we have a difference between mental age and physical age and mental capacity so someone might be physically 45 but have the mental age of a 16 year old or even lower so they might not understand boundaries so if you're in a cell house you need to know before you move in what behaviors of concern there are as well so i will my behaviors of concern is i will socially isolate myself i will blow up i won't ask for help Behaviours of concern don't have to be mental health issues. They are things that prevent you from living your best life and asking for help as well. So that's a huge one to be aware of as well. And a support worker client relationship is a very special one as well because there is a lot of intimate moments as well. So it could be bathing a person, showering, dressing, it might be if they're in the family home talking to mum and dad it might be getting invited to events and conferences if they're a public speaker so also from the support worker side you need to be very clear on your ethics so do the family include you in christmas do they get you a birthday present what level of present are you willing to accept and what are you going to report as well and um, guys I do know that some agencies require you to report gifts and presents if it's generally I've heard across all industries when I was working as a pharmacy assistant it was generally anything above ten dollars or a cup of coffee and biscuits as well so guys their support worker and support relationships what might be a great fit for one person might not be a great fit for another so you guys need to be able to speak up so this is a part of exercising choice and control so I will be doing a video with Deb about choice and control as well uh, where limited decision making needs to come in because choice and control is very inherently tied to dignity of risk but there are some situations where that might not be practical or even possible for the person so there's things where things like supported decision making come into it having a nominee having a decision maker going into adult guardianship as well and uh, guys um we're going to talk about something that we saw on linkedin that we think is a red flag around financial management there is an app designed for support workers and clients to essentially Vimo money across and it shows who made the transaction. But we see a lot of red flags because you're essentially giving someone your bank account. If they see that they have more than you, what are they going to do? 
certain eyes. Um, I'm going to do a thing around support worker and ethics as well. Um, value driven and pro for profit agencies as well. So guys, I know this has been a bit of a rambly video on disability and relationships, but it's an important one to discuss about support worker client relationships and they're there to assist you and not hold you back and so i am going to do the difference between a reason and an excuse as well because i think that's a topic we need to talk about a lot more in disability because i'm seeing in and of myself a phenomenon called learnt dependence and de-skilling me as well so guys if I've earned your subscription, if you've learnt anything, please, if you can, like, share, subscribe, comment as well. So guys, I will see you guys in the next video.